rows of holes, two holes in each row. A terminal plugged into any of those will be applied to this voltage. VP minus is set up likewise. VP plus applies a voltage which is positive relative to ground. Remember on our bench power supply we had two terminals. We set a voltage difference using the bench power supply. What we're doing here is setting a voltage relative to ground. VP minus allows me to apply a voltage which is negative relative to ground. I also have a fixed voltage supply, VCC. It can put out either a constant 5 volts or a constant 3.3 volts. All of these power supplies have significant currents available to them, up to 1.5 amps. There is another set of power supplies, VREF1 and VREF2, which provides variable voltages. However, these are very current limited. Okay, you can't get a lot of power out of these terminals. Okay, now let's try applying a voltage with the EE board and measuring the voltage that we're applying. I'm going to measure a voltage at VP plus first. So I'm going to plug in a jumper wire in VP plus, another jumper wire in ground, and I'm going to measure the voltage difference between VP plus and ground using my DMM. To measure that, it's a DC voltage. I'll select the V with the bar next to it. At the moment, I'm getting almost nothing, a half a millivolt. That's because I haven't turned power on. Now, this is important. You should always do your circuit wiring without power being applied to the board. If you go take a look at the waveform software, there's a button in the upper left-hand corner that says power is off. That turns off power to all of the different power supplies. You should leave that off while you're wiring up your circuit. The terminology is that you wire the circuit toward the supply. You do all your wiring on the breadboard, then finally you apply power to your circuit. You don't want to be touching a circuit which has power supplied to it. You can shock yourself. Also, you can damage your circuit. So I'm going to select VP+. It's indicating that that is ready. Over here, it is indicating the current voltage level that is selected, so I should be getting 6 volts on VP+, and it is indicating the current limit, 1 amp. So I have a maximum possible of 1 amp at the moment and 6 volts. It's like setting the two knobs that we saw on the bench power supply. If I turn power on now, I see that my DMM is now registering 6 volts because I have asked it for 6 volts at VP+. Plus. Everything is just hunky-dory. I can also use the EE board itself to measure a voltage. Remember that I have four V-meter channels here, V-meter 1, 2, 3, and 4. If I connect VP+, plus to V-meter 1, and then display that, on the waveform software screen, I have V meter 1 is 5.997 volts okay, relative to ground. I can do the same thing with VP minus. Let me turn power off, change this to VP minus. I should be getting a voltage now which is negative relative to ground. So VP minus is now ready. VP plus is off. I should be getting negative 5 volts when I turn power on. Click power on. I'm getting minus 5.02 volts on my DMM. I'm also getting a similar amount, minus 4.999 volts here on V meter 1. The final exercise in lab assignment 0 is to connect a MOSFET and make measurements to show that it acts as a dependent source. Demonstration for that are provided in Lecture C, which you should have watched already. This concludes the overview material for Lab Assignment 0. You should now have all the material necessary for you to go ahead and complete the lab assignment.